So our presentation that's coming up is entitled LGBTQ People's Freedom and Rights in East Africa with Paul Pamba Paul Samuels. And this presentation is sponsored by TVA along with our presenting sponsor, Nissan. Before we get into that and introduce our speaker or, or have our speaker speak, uh, Professor Langston's gonna tell us just a little bit about how this came about. I just wanted to make a programming note. Um, we had invited a bunch of people to come and uh, we had a lot of trouble with people getting visas, uh, especially our embassy in Tanzania was very strict. Uh, and then a whole bunch of things happened in Uganda recently. And so uh, we're, we're gonna hear a, about that. I just uh, wanted you to know if you look in the program why there's so few of the people in the program who are here, there are um, a variety of very good reasons. And we're gonna find out about that in just a moment. But luckily, uh, one of our presenters was able to make it, and uh, I'm very excited to introduce uh, Pamba Paul Samuel. Thank you so much, Professor Will. Uh, good morning. My name is Pamba Paul Samuel. I'm from Uganda, East Africa. And greetings from Uganda. I, I, I wrote a speech, but I feel like I'm going to have to talk to you heart to heart. I don't have to go through this speech. I feel like I want to talk to you heart to heart. I don't know whether this mic, someone can help. Hold it closer if you want. Slide it, we can slide down and then maybe both are on you. Oh. Yeah, I think you can pull it out if you want to hold it. I, I, I don't like talking to people when I'm positioned in the one place. <laughs> I feel comfortable if I can have the freedom of moving here and there, but it's okay. Uh, once again, my name is Paul Pamba Samuel. <clears throat> um, um, I work with a government institute in Uganda. I'm a dean of students <clears throat> in one of the universities in Uganda, and that is Vasogan Sad Memorial <clears throat> Technical Institute. I'm also a student counselor. I'm also a human rights defender and activist, and I'm glad to be here. I, I want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. William for having granted us this opportunity <clears throat> to come and speak on the 10th, on I think this is the 10th <clears throat> meeting of the LGBT here in Tennessee. <clears throat> I'll begin by by giving you a simple overview of what is happening in Uganda right now about the LGBT condition, uh, LGBT people, some of the things they are going through right now in the in, in in Uganda, and what is happening in Uganda, it is almost the same that is happening in East Africa and Africa at large. When you look, I'm going to use Uganda as a case study because that's where I come from. But when you look at Uganda, you get a clear picture of what is taking place in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Burundi, and in Africa at large. <clears throat> on, the 20th, on, on the 21st of March <clears throat> this year, the Ugandan parliament passed a bill that is against the LGBT people. And if you can look out on the internet, some of you like Dr. William has been in touch with us for all this time. 
if you can look out on the internet, YouTube, you can see clearly what is going, to, what is taking place in Uganda against the LGBT people. <clears throat> Our Ugandan lawmakers passed this bill on the 21st of, of, of March this year, and the bill is targeting the LGBT community in Uganda. <clears throat> The, the bill basically calls for a death penalty against these people. And it is, it has, it is very terrible. Because of this bill, <clears throat> the, there is a lot of violence happening right now in Uganda against these people, against us. The bill has empowered the the local authorities to carry out violent acts against these people. Most of us have been arrested. Most of us have been tortured. Most of them are languishing in prison. It is not easy what is happening in Uganda right now. There are scenarios why some of them, some of our alleged people want to commit suicide. <clears throat> some of them have been disowned by parents. Some of them have lost their jobs because of their identities. <clears throat> Most of them are facing harsh social discrimina discrimination in the community. And right now, as I speak, over a hundred of over hundred members of our organization, they are languishing in different prisons throughout the country. So it is. It, I count myself to be very luck, very lucky to be here. It was not easy. I myself, I faced an arrest two weeks ago prior to my coming here, and Doctor Will has been following that, and I was released on police bond. <laughs> You know, but fortunately, because um, I've been an advocate of the High Court for the previous five years, I was able to get out. But on police bond, with the help of a few, a few lawyer friends of our community. But for most of our colleagues, they are still in prison. And Every day I receive emails on my phone, what is taking place since I arrived here and how these people desperately need help to get out of the prison. Most of them, when they reach in prison, what's happening exactly? When, once you go to these prisons in our country, because of your identity, because you identify with LGBT, this is so... Uh, this is so absurd, but there, there are some drugs the, the, the government agencies inject in you, in your body, against your will. And when you come out of prisons, uh, most of them, then to, they, they don't take long because of these drugs that they inject. They, they, they completely want to wipe out this community, you know, because, you know, the African setting, they consider this as something abnormal, something abominable, something... You, 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 I don't know how I can better explain it, but in Africa to, to identify yourself with as an LGBT person, like for example, if you come from a certain family, the family will, they consider you, they consider you as someone who's cast, you brought shame to their family. And most of these people are being owned, disowned by parents. And as a result of this, most of them come, they are dropping out of school you know, you know, because they don't have support for education. If because you can imagine, some of you here are students. If one day you wake up and your parent disowns you because of your identity, you can imagine how that can psychologically uh, uh, torture you. You know, so some of them have gone away from home because the parents have just them. The parents consider them as a shame to the family. You know, and as a result, most of them have gone in the streets. For the young boys, 19 years, 20 years, you find I, we have most of them on the streets because of their identity and because the parents have completely done away with them. And for the girls, it, I, I even don't know how I can explain this to you. 
you know, but, but what I want to tell you is the terrible situation happening down there in Uganda right now. I also work with an organization called Chestin. It is called Ch Chestin. We help these people in one way or the other. You know, I've been in advocates for quite a, a good number of years and through experience and knowledge, I've learned how to deal with some of these situations we are having in our country. <clears throat> but my being here is to share with you the knowledge I've acquired over the years and to share with you our experience we are facing down there in Africa and to give an opportunity to some of you to see how you can come down, come down to Uganda and possibly to East Africa and help these people in one way or the other. You know, uh, there is that open door we are giving you. You know, Uganda is open. You can come and you have an advantage once you're an American citizen. <laughs> there, is that, uh, there is that protection you have when you come down to enough. It doesn't matter whether you, you identify as LGBT, but once you're an American citizen, you have that protection given to you by your country. So we welcome you to Uganda. You know, I know and I believe that you can make a difference in the lives of these people who are, who are, who are, who are suffering down there in Africa, you know. This, the, the religious community in Uganda, uh, together with our parliament, the Ugandan lawmakers, you know, and together with so many government agencies, they are cracking down on the LGBT community every single day. You know, I keep getting tweets from my colleagues whom have left in Uganda. And they, first of all, they send their apologies. They were not able to come because most of them, they were arrested. You know, they really wanted to be here, you know, but on the eve of this conference, most of them got arrested and I left most of them in prison, unfortunately. But still, I'm working here with some lawyers, even though I'm here in Tennessee, but I keep uh, getting in touch with some lawyers back in Uganda to see that they can get their freedom back and get out of the prisons. Because I know the longer they take in prisons, they, they have the chances they come out, then they will live a short time and then they will die. Because what the government is doing down there is that they, there is some medicine they, they inject into these people because they are, they, their point is that they want to wipe away these people. You know, and the politically, our government considers the LGBT community as one which has been sponsoring the opposition against the government. So they are targeting this community politically and because of their beliefs. So they want to, to ensure that the community, the, these people who, be, who identify with LGBT are completely wiped out of Uganda. So we are trying so hard to see that some of these people who have been arrested, they come out of prison because we know exactly what happens once they go in prison. And some of them, unfortunately, when they get into prison, yes, they are being raped. For example, for ladies, I have some ladies I know in our organizations who, are, who were arrested in Eastern Uganda. And when they were taken to, to prison, they were stripped naked <clears throat> and they were being raped, you know? And unfortunately, the people who do this are the men in uniform, you know, because they want to prove uh, these people truly lesbianism, are they transgender, don't they have any feeling for the opposite sex? So they end up raping terribly these ladies and it is, it is something very absurd. <clears throat> And unfortunately, the government keeps looking the other side. You know, once it comes to the LGBT community, it's like the government doesn't want to know, you know. It's like it's the government sponsoring, doing underground sponsorship to against, uh, towards the violence of these people, you know. So, We are facing so many challenges as the LGBT community in Uganda. And what I'm telling you is the same scenario happening in Kenya. 
in Tanzania, you know, it's like a storm that has risen up against the LGB community, especially from the very beginning of this year. You know, they are facing a lot of violence, a lot of discrimination, you know, a lot of hatred in the community. Most of them are living in hiding. You know, most of them have completely gone in total hiding. You know, they have dropped out of school. For those who were students, they have gone out of school, you know, because of social discrimination. They cannot, they are, they are, they are easy targets at school. They can't stand the pressure from people who believe differently from them. You know, those in, in the working places, they are losing their jobs, you know. And just like the previous presenter has said, most of them are losing their jobs, you know. Most of them are being demoted because all this is all because of what they identify, you know. And it's because, but we believe that everyone has the, the freedom to, 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 to identify the way they believe they are, you know. We believe it's their right to their identification. So we are trying to do what we can to see that we fight for our social freedom, we fight for our human rights, you know, but we need people like you who can come down there and want to support us by, by speaking out against the social discrimination we are facing, by speaking out against what the government is doing down there. You know, because if you keep quiet when you're here, when I know here you, you, you I don't know the challenges you are facing here, you know, but your voices are very helpful down there. Once you rise up and you speak against the acts of violence taking place in Uganda, and especially being when you speak about what the government is trying to do to these people, to silence them, to kill them, you know, to destroy them, to wipe them out completely, it will be helpful, you know, to preserve the LGB community in Uganda. I don't, I don't earn much as a dean of students, <laughs> you know, but over the number of years, I've tried to use what I earn to help these communities because most of them are students and they are not working, you know, and some of them are vulnerable people in the community, you know. You know, we, we, we have many members, you know, and what we, the services, which we are trying to offer as an organization is that we provide shelter, we provide counseling to these people, we provide a few medical services where we can, we provide uh, some of them that need, you know, the education system in Africa is not like here, especially in Uganda, it's a little bit different, you know. So what we are doing <clears throat> with the little we have is that, we are providing shelter to some of these people who have been who have run away from their homes because they have been chased out of their homes by their parents, and we provide uh, <clears throat> counseling to some of these people going through a lot of emotional and psychological torture, and and a few medical services, you know. But it is not enough because the pressure is too much, you know. And the, I, 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 I request uh, the person uh, working on the reception there over there to, to try to put up some, 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 some photos. I carried some photos alongside me, you know. Yes, that's the Ugandan Parliament when they were passing the bill on twenty on on the twenty first of of March this year, you know, and the bill granted the public a lot of uh, powers. There is a way the bill granted them force, and they rose up suddenly. The following day, everywhere in the country, they rose up against these people. They were they 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 identified, targeted these people. Some of them lost their homes. Some of them lost their property, their businesses. You know, once they know that so and so is is LGBT, you know, they, then the mob will gang up on you, stone you up, beat you up. If they know your address, they will come for you, burn down your house, you know, stone you. 
you know, some of them in some rare cases we've been having, people have been stoned to death, you know, because, you know, mob justice is very bad. And unfortunately, our, our, uh, the, 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 the law in Uganda is just looking the other way at this point in time, whereby when it comes to the LGBT community. So it is more so, it is the, almost the same challenges that these people, uh, that he, the previous uh, presenter was talking about that we are facing down in Africa. So, excuse me, yes, I, it's, I don't know. Can you help me please? I would love to have those pictures running in motion, please. Yes, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> I had been arrested because I'm a well-known activist. And fortunately, I was able to get out of police custody on bond. And that's why I'm here. Can we please continue? I, 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 I want those pictures to keep running, please. Yeah, I know they'll get it right, but I want to call upon each one of you. If you can make a difference in Uganda, towards the LGBT community, please, your help is highly welcome, you know. Your voices, if you decide to keep quiet, most of them will die, you know. If you stand up and speak against the violence towards this, which is being committed against these people, it will be very much helpful and you'll save their lives, you know. It is not only about financial help, but you need to, 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 to stand up and speak against what the government is trying to do. You know, what, he, what, what, what he's doing is against the international uh, human rights law, you know. So those people in prison, those people facing violence, they need their freedom, you know. And it is upon you, you know, once you people here in the United States speak up, you know, there is a way our government pays attention, you know, and actually our president is delaying to sign the bill into law because what happens is that if parliament passes the bill, then the bill is forwarded to the president. But once the president endorses, he puts his signature, then the bill becomes law. So we are worried, you know, but if you people can stand up and speak, I think that pressure will come on, will dawn on the president and Right now, he's reluctant to sign that bill, but already because past, Parliament has already passed it, it has given the 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 the, the country uh, a lot of strength to rise up against the LGBT people. So, I'm encouraging you, please, use your platforms, your various platforms, and speak out against the violence. You know and the lawlessness that is happening against the LGBT people in Uganda. The challenges we are facing, it needs your hand, a collective effort, you know, because we believe that two can make a difference. You know, once we put our efforts together, we can try to change lives for those people in Uganda. You know, as like I say that 
personally i've been i've been in this for over eight years and i finished my university degree in 2002 2012 you know and luckily i got a job the, that i began working with some organization that was together for uganda in in 2013 so i've been in this advocacy thing for quite a long time and i know exactly <clears throat> what i'm talking about you know but what i've discovered is that you cannot do it alone you need partners you need people to come on board and therefore i'm welcoming people who want to help these people who are suffering because of their identity back then in africa especially in uganda where i come from or east africa at large you know because uh, when, once you come to uganda you, you east africa is almost integrating you know uganda and kenya they're almost working out an integration together so it is almost the same thing what is happening in uganda is happening in kenya come happening in tanzania happening in rwanda so we are calling upon everyone who would love to to join us to fight for our rights and freedoms in uganda and east africa in general to join us and some of the activities we have been doing to to, to promote our freedom and to help these people who are vulnerable is that we've been doing agriculture activities. I'm sorry I'm not reading through the speech because I prefer uh, speaking out my heart to you, you know, than reading. Sometimes these things are so boring, but when you speak from your heart, you beat, you feel better, you know. So uh, we are doing agricultural activities. I'm a good farmer. <laughs> You know, I most of my weekends I go to my farm. I do agriculture, and basically that is we 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 grow sugarcane for commercial purposes, and then we are also growing rice for commercial purposes. We grow it on a large scale, and that's where we get most of our. You know, government government salaries cannot sustain most of our activities, so we have to do something extra in order to get money to support most of these people that come when they need help. You know, now like uh, I'm spending a lot of money getting all these people in prison because they have to pay cash, you know, to get bail, you know, to get police bond, you have to pay cash. You know, last night I received a lot of emails, you know, from some of the lawyers I'm working with in order to get most of our colleagues out of prison because we are worried for them. We are afraid for them that they may come out of prison, live long, for a short time and die. Like I've told you what the government basically does. You know, they will arrest you, put you in police custody. And if you are not well known, they will inject you with something which you never know. When you come out of prison a few days, maybe one month, you, 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 you pass on, you know. So, uh, uh, and from some of these activities, that's where we are trying to get funds to, to, to run our organization and to help these people. We also do, and unfortunately, I don't know why the pictures have not come on, but we also do stone crushing. Uh, basically, all these activities, the point is that we want to raise money from them such that we can be able to support ourselves. You know, we don't want to wait so much for someone else to come from outside and support us. We want to do something for ourselves and if there is any other person who would want to come and offer support, then they'll find us already doing something on our own, you know. So, and I also, uh, uh, I, I, I've also told you that we are offering shelter. Last year, <clears throat> I began building up something for these people, you know, because the numbers are overwhelming that keep coming up to you, you know. And I deal with the students most of the time. I'm with students. So, and it is so touching when you find these young people come up to your office and then a student tells you that my parent is chasing me away from home because of my identity, you know. And then a student start, begins crying in front of you. What do you do? And you're dean of this student, you know. And you are now thinking that if I leave this person without help, this person is going to go on the streets and maybe something terrible will happen to him or her on the streets. So you are moved with compassion and you move to find a way of helping this person in one way or the other you know sometimes the help you offer may not be necessary much but you are forced to do something at least to do something for this person you know 
and maybe we also trying to engage their parents you know because in my case i've been having many cases with families you know i have to go to look for the family of these people these students and i have to talk to their parents you know some of them have been re they reluctantly listen to us some of them they vow never to allow those students back in their homes for as long as they still identify as LGBT. So it is a little bit challenging, you know. So, but you have to have the capacity in order to be in position and help these people. So what we decided as the organization, we decided to, 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 to make some fundraising amongst ourselves back in Uganda. And we began building some, some shelters for them yeah, you know, and you know, it is not so much expensive to build in Uganda. It's, maybe it's not like here, you know, because I do stone crushing. I have a company that makes stone crushing and in, we get raw materials. Basically, we don't put in so much money. We get raw materials on our own. I can go and stone crush what we call aggregates or hardcore, and then also make bricks. And then we put up shelters for these people. So, and at the end of the day, you find like you made a difference in the life of these people and they are so happy and for those who are able we can we manage to put them back in school like i said education in uganda is not as expensive as here but we we try we are trying our level best to see that we make a difference in the lives of these lgbt people <clears throat> and i don't know why the pictures have not come on but i would have loved to to to, to show you some of the things we are doing down there in, in, in Africa. There is a young man who was wiped seriously because of his identity, you know, uh, there is a video, please can you yeah, put on that video, and right now as I speak, he, his back was rotting, you know, uh, that young man there, he was wiped seriously because of his uh, publicly humiliated, you know, you know. That is some of the scenarios what is happening down there. You can imagine what happened to the back of that young man. You know, it is all because of what he identifies with as LGBT. So, if you sit here and do nothing about that, you know, then these people have a lot of hope that at least you people, you can raise up and speak against the violence they are facing right now. You can raise up and, and try to fight for their freedoms and liberty. There isn't much they're asking for from you. All they need from you is to help them speak against, use your various platforms and speak against these fires with hope that maybe the government will, 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 will listen to you and stop doing these things. And now you've seen it's just one of them, but there are so many scenarios of what is happening. You can see public humiliation, you know, you are being wiped publicly, you're being humiliated publicly, you know. It is not easy. And therefore, I'm calling upon our American friends here. I, I believe you're all from the United States here. And I'm calling upon you, you know. And most of these people are students, like I said. And most of you here are also students, you know. You're welcome to Uganda. You can, we, 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 there are so many platforms where you can come to Uganda and speak to these people directly, encourage them, you know, and strengthen them, what they are going through, you know. It can be very much helpful, you know. So don't just sit here and uh, someone else needs your voice to be heard. Someone else needs your help, 
to be heard. So I'm urging you and I'm asking you, if you can, please do something and help these people. And then lastly, yes, thank you. Thank you. So this is some of, uh, some of the stone crushing businesses we do, you know, you know, because Uganda is still a developing country, you know, there is a lot of opportunities in the, in the construction. So we take advantages of the available opportunities in our country. And we, tr we are trying to do some of these businesses in order to raise money, you know, and this money helps us to mobilize and make awareness and sensitivity, sensitization, and make us reach out to these people because most of them stay in rural areas, you know, and it is very hard to reach to them unless you have to go there physically, organize conferences like this, um, speak to them physically, you have to reach out to them, you know. So if you don't have finances, it will be very hard to do that. So we have to do, we try to do something by ourselves, you know. No one has been helping us, you know. This is all by ourselves. You know, we've not, we've never had any donor to help us. We never had any pattern to help us. This is all by ourselves, you know. And uh, we get companies, Chinese companies who are working in Uganda. Most of them come and they buy from us those stones. You know, we get government agencies that come, you know, and buy from us. And some of these raw materials, we use it to construct these shelters for these people. So uh, those are some of the things that are, are helping us to run our day-to-day -day activities in fighting for the freedoms and the rights of the LGBT people in Uganda. No. Yeah, those are some of the, the 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 simple units we are putting up to help these people who are who are becoming homeless because of their identities, you know. And like I said, you know, it is very easy to help, you know. It is all once you decide to reach, to step out and do a difference in a community, it is very possible. You can achieve it, you can do it very well, you know. So I'm urging everyone who's listening on Zoom and everyone who is present here, please make a decision, you know, to make a difference in the lives of these people. You know, most of them are hoping this, some of the agriculture plantations, you know, we're doing farm, uh, rearing rice, you know, growing rice, these are some of the plantations. What we do, we hire land, you know, we hire land. You know, when you're growing agriculture, a rice on a large scale, it will need huge amounts of money, you know, but it is easier for us once we hire land and we, we begin to grow. And rice basically takes three months. Then in the fourth month, we harvest, and then we are good to go. We, 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 we take the, to the markets and we're able to get money. And But unfortunately, most of the violent local communities, they're also cracking down on our plantations, setting them on fire. Like we had scenarios whereby a colleague lost a home, his home was set on fire, and this car was set on fire because of his identity, because, and as you can see, Uganda is very beautiful. You are all welcome to Uganda, <laughs> you know. So that is one of a car for a colleague with whom we work. He was attacked by the community within where he stays because the people within the community he stays, uh, they, 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 they disagree with his identity. So they decided to attack him once the law, once parliament passed the law, it's like the whole country went on fire. Everywhere from different parts of the country, people rose up against the LGBT community and they began attacking them from different angles. You know, most of them lost their jobs. Most of them lost their property. You know, most of them lost their homes. You know, so 
the situation has not been easy in Uganda. And every day it is becoming worse, you know, all because of this bill. And we, it is our humble prayer that you people in the United States here can use your voices to speak out to the government, to speak against what is happening in our country. We believe that because of the pressure from the United States, maybe the government will be able to, to lessen its hand on the LGBT community. So these are some of the units we are putting up, you know, to help to house some of these members, you know, and also healthy services, you know, because unfortunately most of these people cannot be able to afford healthy care by themselves. So we try to collectively, or some of of us who are who have been who have been able to 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 do something realize and so there are some local people with whom we work in order to to do hiv sensitization <clears throat> you know we offer also malaria testing you know malaria is one of the most prevailing diseases in uganda and the, every eight kills a big number of people in uganda especially babies and our point is to show the the country that LGBT people uh, are useful to the development of the country. So we try to positively reach out the country, not necessarily the LGBT community. We are not limited to the LGBT community, but we try also to reach out to young kids in rural places, you know, to young to vulnerable families, poor families, and we offer health services like uh, malaria testing and vaccination for free. And we've been doing all this on our own without anyone partnering with us. But now, because of the current situation in the country, uh, the numbers of people who need help is overwhelming, you know. So we've been doing it because there was no much pressure, but because of this bill, it has brought about a lot of pressure, you know, and most of the people are reaching to, out to us for help. So it has overwhelmed us a little bit. And on that note, we are asking anyone, you know, I don't know what you can do to to be to make a difference in the lives of these people, you know. But we are urging anyone with whatever you can do. Either you move to Africa and do volunteering work with these people, either you come down and speak to them, either you financially help them, you know, we are urging you to do something, you know, for these people. You know, like I say that you, no one is going to touch you once you come down to Uganda or East Africa because you're protected by virtue of being an American, you know, there is a way our governments down in Africa, they respect that. Once they know that you're an American citizen, even though you identify as LGBT, they do nothing about it. So come to Africa, come to Uganda confidently knowing that you'll be protected, you know, and the, we are looking forward to, 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 to welcoming you and receiving you in Africa. There's a lot. You know, these people need to, to, you need to go down there and speak to these people. It can make a difference in their lives, especially the local people, especially the students, you know. There is a lot of volunteering work you can do there, you know. Don't just sit here, you know. Uh, you can come to the university where I teach. We will highly welcome you, gladly receive you, and give you a lot of opportunity to do volunteering work, you know. I talked to my principal once when I was coming here and he told me to, to, to give you that invitation. That is why I'm asking you, especially students who want to do internship in, in, in Africa, you want to do volunteering work, you, you, you are highly welcome. And like I said, Uganda is very beautiful. You know, uh, the, a British man, Winston Churchill called it the power of Africa. There is a lot of natural beauty. For those who love natural beauty, I think Uganda is your right destination. You know, like I, I, I have, I've showed you, these are some of the rocks we buy and then we begin stone crushing them for commercial purposes. And it has helped us a lot to be able to run our organization independently without any, anyone sponsoring us or partnering with us. But like I've also said that because of the pressure now, we need to have other people come on board to stand with us and to help us.
well, I didn't come here much prepared. I think that's why the 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 photos the 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 photos are not in order because I had a lot of pressure. You know, at the airport, most of my work was confiscated by the officials. You know, uh, like I said, I I have done a lot of research and my research work. I was bringing it for Professor Will, but once we reached the airport, most of my things were taken by the officials. You know, so unfortunately, I came a little bit stressed and I was not. All, all right, that's why I think my photos were not, I didn't have the time to prepare well. You know, I'd just come out of police custody. I was having some stress. I'm having a lot of issues with other members. I'm trying to help come out, you know. So it is not, it has not been easy, but I'm thankful that I'm here, you know, and I'm going to convey my regards back to, to those people. And they're all happy that I'm here, you know and they send you their greetings. And finally, those people gave me a simple present because Professor Will has been with us for quite a long time and he has been encouraging us, standing with us and supporting us. And so I'd love to request Professor William Langston to please come. Those people gave me something small as a gift from Uganda, you know, to present to him. Oh, yes, they, they made for Professor a magic cup. It keeps turning colors. Every time you pour cold water, it will turn into a different color. You pour hot. Yes, but it keeps changing colors. It keeps changing colors. So that's their token of love and appreciation for the efforts professors been doing towards helping them, towards their freedom. Otherwise, I'm sorry I've not been so much organized. Forgive me. You know, you know when every time I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down, I keep getting emails of what is happening back at home. So it's not been easy. You know, though my heart my body might be here, but my spirit, I'm going to keep running here. Which lawyer can I get to help so and so? Which lawyer can I call to help so and so? So that's what is going on through my mind. But I'm very happy for, for the opportunity to speak to you. And I'm very humbled to be here. And I've fallen in love with Tennessee. I love the, the sceneries. I'm seeing around Tennessee, you know, back in Africa. When they when they when they say that you are going to the United States, they call it the the heaven on earth. The United States back in Africa is called that you are going to 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 the heaven on earth. <laughs> they call here heaven on earth. So I'm very grateful for professor for for, for what professor has done for us and the opportunity has given us to to share our experiences and knowledge uh, of LGBT people here. To, to the Tennessee audience and those watching us from Zoom. And Professor, thank you so much. And like we talked yesterday, Professor, we are looking forward to re receiving you in Uganda. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, for those of you like who will say, Uganda has a lot of natural beauty. There is the, river, the longest river in the world is from Uganda. So please. We make it a point. There are mo most of your colleagues are always there, especially in the summer, you know. And there are, there are many mountains. There's a lot national game parks, you know. So you can have fun in Uganda. You can come, speak to us, encourage us, strengthen us, support us in one or the other, and still we take you out. You can have a lot of fun, and you'll never forget that experience in Uganda and in East Africa. Thank you so much.